Hi and welcome to Vulcan from Zero to Hero. In this section, we are going to take a look at Vulcan SDK and we will learn how to set up a development environment for Vulcan. This video is about introducing the history of GPU APIs, especially Vulkan API, which was presented by Kronos Group. Welcome to the first video of hands off graphics programming with Vulkan API. We will learn how to set up the prerequisites on target machine and how to build and run the first Hello Vulkan code on your target operating system. Considering the fact that Vulkan is a cross platform, in this section, I will show you how to set up Vulkan on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS X. But before anything, let's get a little bit information about the history of GPU APIs. The word GPU stands for Graphical Processor Unit. Your graphics card contains many cores which work in parallel. In order to communicate with these cores and send them instructions, we need an application programming interface, which is called API. API is a set of functions and procedures that allow the creation of applications that access the features or data of an operating system application, or in our case, the GPUs. In October 1958, physicist William Higginbottom created the first video game. 1970s was the golden age of arcade games. These games were powered by Fujitsu's MB14241, Atari 2600's TV interface adapter, and etc. At that moment, there was no unique API for those adapters and consoles, and each device presented their own API. It's not difficult to imagine how hard it must have been for game developers to integrate. In 1991, in order to launch a unique API for GPUs, Silicon Graphics started developing OpenGL. They successfully launched OpenGL on January 1992. That was considered a revolution. Three years later, Microsoft released a game SDK for Windows 95 called DirectX. Since then, they didn't support OpenGL on their Windows core and pushed GPU programmers and game developers to use DirectX. Let's talk about the evolution of GPU API. In 1992, Silicon Graphics released OpenGL as a standard GPU API with fixed functions pipeline. And just three years later, DirectX was released by Microsoft on Windows 95. Again, they have stopped supporting OpenGL in Windows. In 1996, 3D FXS Glide was released with geometry and texture mapping. Glide is a 3D graphics API developed by 3D FX Interactive for their Voodoo Graphics 3D Accelerator cards. Although it originally started as a proprietary API, later it became open sourced by 3D FX. Due to wide adoption of 3D FX, Glide was used extensively in the late 90s. But on the one hand, further refinement of the Microsoft's Direct 3D and the appearance of the full OpenGL implementations from other graphics card vendors, and on the other, the growing diversity in 3D hardware led to its gradual unproductivity. In 1998, DirectX version 6 was released and it did support multi-texturing. In the following year, Microsoft released the seventh version of DirectX, which supported hardware texturing, lighting, and cube mapping. Until 2000, both DirectX and OpenGL used fixed function pipelines, but with the rise of DirectX 8, the new ability for programming shaders for GPU has been added. So with DirectX 8, you can write shaders via high-level shading language, which is known as HLSL. 
In 2002, DirectX was released with major updates such as floating point texture mapping, multiple render targets, multiple textures, texture lookup in vertex shader stage, and stencil buffer techniques. Two years later, OpenGL released the next major update, and by releasing version 2, they proposed GLSL as a new shader programming language. Both GLSL and HLSL syntax look like C programming language. It's even safe to say that it's C, without pointers. In 2006, DirectX 10 was released with major update namely Geometry Shader. This stage helped developers to control and modify vertices between vertex shader and pixel shader stages. However, DirectX was still the leader during those days. Three years later, DirectX released two breaking changes, namely tessellation and compute shaders. Both pipeline stages solved lots of problems in real-time rendering. One year later, OpenGL released two versions, 3.3 and 4.0. It was designed to target hardware which supports Direct3D 10 and 11. However, from 2010 to 2015, there was not really a great change in DirectX and OpenGL. For example, DirectX team released minor versions for DirectX 11, which integrated DirectX to the new core of Windows 8 called WinRT. Yet Apple started kicking OpenGL out discreetly and soon proposed a new GPU API called Metal for their iOS and OS X operating systems. In 2015, Windows 10 was released. It contained new SDK for next generation of DirectX called DirectX 12. The next year, the next generation of OpenGL called Volcon was released by Kronos Group and finally in 2017, OpenGL released its final version for their 25th anniversary. So what is the story behind DirectX 12, Volcon and Metal? In 2013, AMD originally developed Mantle in cooperation with DICE. DICE is the company behind Frostbite engine, the one which is used in developing games like Battlefield series and FIFA. Mantle was designed as an alternative to DirectX 11 and OpenGL 4. The Mantle reduced CPU usage and let developers to control GPUs directly without any overhead. This resulted in higher frame per second for real-time applications. At first, AMD wanted to release Mantle as a public SDK for all developers, but in 2015, they suspended the idea and decided to release DirectX 12 and Volcon based on the architecture of Mantle. As you can see, DirectX is only supported via Microsoft platforms, such as Xbox One and Windows 10, but Volcon is cross-platform. It's supported on Windows 7 and later versions, Linux, Android version 6, or later versions, but it is not officially supported by Apple on OS X and iOS. Apple decided to run its own GPU API, namely Metal. Metal does not support tessellation and geometry shaded stages. The question is why do we need to migrate to the new GPU APIs? Low driver overhead means you can directly communicate with GPU for managing memory, context, threads, and so on. Minimize runtime validation means faster initializing. Direct3D11 proposed multi-threaded rendering, but here you have the ability to control all GPU cores in parallel. Besides, memory handling is optimized especially for sharing memory between CPU and GPU. And as I've mentioned before, you have full control over your GPUs. As you can see in the new generation, the developer has to control GPU directly with lower overhead. Okay, that's all for now. 
Thank you for watching this video and tune in for the next one. In the next video, we are going to learn how to set up Vulkan SDK on Windows.